Yeah, yeah. We used to have an expression when I was in the field running operations. You know, if somebody briefs you on an op, and at the end you just say, "Wow, there's hardly anything that could go wrong with that plan." You know, which was <laughs> usually usually a sign that uh, that things were going to go sideways real fast. Um, well, I mean, we're bringing them to the United States because we have zero confidence whatsoever in the medical care, uh, you know, that they're going to get in West Africa. But yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. It is a mess, you know. And this is another one of these classic examples of a situation we've been focused on for some time. And you know, this is not really new news that that this thing's out of control. But all of a sudden, in typical fashion, in the last week or two, you know, the major networks are seized with this. Um, been percolating for a while. Well, do do you think? Um do, do, do you think this is going to be like the bird flu thing where, yeah, we all got scared, we all ran out and tried to do our best to, to make sure nobody got bird flu, but I, I, I just, I don't know. I, I look at this and I think, is this just a way for Big Pharma to at some point, they're, they're going to develop a cure or a vaccine and then all of a sudden everybody in the brothers got to get it and they make all sorts of cash. Well, here's here's what I think. I, whether whether or not this is going to become a huge issue in the United States, I think is is one question because yeah. uh, we live in a place with all of our problems and all of our issues, where we have uh, you know fairly abundant and fairly readily available medical care. Although it may not feel like that every day, um, it is a huge issue in West Africa because the I mean the biggest issue here is that this disease previously was only the only outbreaks were out in out in the sticks you know i mean out, out in the villages in in very remote areas with very small populations and now you have this this disease spreading like wildfire in cities that are filled with millions and millions of people and uh, living under conditions you know where they're crowded together in a way that most people in the united states can't even contemplate and with almost relatively speaking almost no medical care so that's a really bad combination, you know, if you're keeping track of all those factors. Oh, that's, very much so. Uh, you know, uh, <laughs> that, that, that has the tendency, you know, and on top of that, the other thing people should take into account is, you know, this is West Africa, and with all due respect to the people that are out there on the front line fighting this disease, risking their lives every day, um, any statistics you read on this, what's going on with this disease in West Africa, you ought to take with a big grain of salt. I mean, the reality is nobody has any idea really how many folks have been infected at this point yeah well i i noticed that uh the, the other day they 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 talked about how they uh how they have brought these guys to the u.s and there's all sorts of different things going on um someone mentioned to us over the weekend uh that what if somebody in the medical community gets desperate enough for some cash some terrorists pay them some cash and they dump something into the water uh, is is that something that could happen, or, or is that just, you know, people looking at this and getting a little scared? Well, you know, the the issue of poisoning water supplies and things is one of those things that typically comes, to, when you really start digging into it, it's one of those things where matters of physics and volume all of a sudden come to play. So it's really easy to come up with a toxin that you could put into a glass of water and it'll kill somebody almost instantaneously. If you start talking about dumping enough toxin or poison or something into a water supply, a reservoir of a large metropolitan area, and you start calculating the volume of toxin or poison you have to put in there to make a lethal dose, what you realize is it isn't a matter of a guy with a test tube. It's a guy with like 12, 12 tank trucks backed up to the reservoir. To So that doesn't turn out to be really a... a something that typically folks worry about but i tell you what has happened since since the, uh, the anthrax attacks in 2001 we decided it was a great idea to build hundreds more biological research labs in this country um which are filled with contagions like anthrax and the plague and the possibility of somebody stealing something out of one of those or just a disgruntled employee walking out i mean that's very real in fact that's exactly what happened in 2001 it was one of our own research scientists who, who took
took that stuff out and mailed it to everybody. It is uh, Charles Faddis with us today here on the program. He joins us coast to coast and border to border talking about some of the different issues going on in the world, one being Ebola. The other issue is this border. Um, there's all sorts of people that uh, back and them went down uh, to the border as a humanitarian uh, mission that got all sorts of people angry. <laughs> and then you've got... Uh, You've got people who want to build this gigantic fence. Uh, then there's people that want to send military to the border. Uh, what, what, are, what are some of the latest news that you're hearing on this? Well, uh, here's, here's what I think the, the, the reality is. And, and you know, I'm, I'm one of these guys that thinks we have created this immigration problem over the course of several decades, and we're going to have to come to terms with what we've created. But the reality is that people... The folks that are coming across the border are, in fact, coming across the border, approaching the Border Patrol, finding them, and the first words out of their mouth are, I want my permit to enter the United States, and I would like to be driven to the bus station. So, I mean, because that's what they actually call the notice of to appear that they're given when they're cut loose. They call it in the immigrant, you know, the, it's known amongst the migrants as the permit to enter the United States. Yeah. So you don't really have to guess what's what's causing them to come here. I mean, what's causing them to come here is that they have a very clear perception that we will not send them back and that we will allow them to remain in the country. And until we change that perception, they're going to keep coming. I mean, you know, I mean, <laughs> that we're, there's never, we're never yeah. going to reach an end state when it's going to be more attractive for them to stay in Honduras than it is to move to the United States, no matter what you we are think correct. about how tough things are. That's never going to happen. Yep. Charles Fattis with us today here on the program, and uh, the border is uh, a complex situation, but another complex situation is Iraq. Uh, this, this just doesn't seem to get any better. I, I don't know how the hell we got from... Well, I do know how the hell we got we got from this, but I don't understand how how we had this situation where we went in, we did the shock and awe, we 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 showed you know what what we spend all this money in the United States on a military budget. We went in, we did our thing, and then it just kind of went downhill from there. Uh, what 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 are we doing over in Iraq right now? You know, um, and 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 not like there's not enough criticism to go around for lots of people in this <laughs> this situation. But yes. right now, we're not doing anything of of any significance and any consequence. I mean, we're not we're not doing anything at all that is impacting on the situation on the ground. And I tell you, this is enormous. I mean, what we are seeing is national borders going away, and we are seeing the creation of a brand new terrorist state uh, not off in the wilds in Afghanistan with a sparse population and no resources but in the heart of the Middle East and um, we are by the way seeing thousands of foreign fighters I mean people from other countries including Americans going there to participate in jihad and already they are capturing them in Europe coming home to undertake operations there uh, you know, we <laughs> it will not stay confined to this yeah. to this uh, state, and we we do not begin to have a hand, our arms around it right now. It is uh, Charles Fattis with us today, and Charles, before we let you go, what's the uh, what's some of the big stories you're working on? You know, actually, I'm going to take another look at the border situation because one of the things that intrigues me about the border is if uh, if we're de bound and determined that we're going to let all these kids in from Honduras. Uh, and, and, and then I, I'm going to take a look at how many more children there are in the world living under similar conditions that we ought to be giving admittance to, because I think that number is pretty close to one billion. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, when, when, so when, that, when, is, when is that going to be out? When, when are you... ho hopefully I'm going to have that up in the next couple of days. I think the tentative title of that is we're going to need some more planes. <laughs> I love you, Charles. That's awesome. <laughs> I love your humor, brother. <laughs> well, Charles, we'll talk to you next week, my friend. Have yourself a good week. All right. All right take care.
Thank you, man. Charles Fattis with us today here on the program.